Alrighty. Hello everyone, my name is Luke Logan. I'm a PhD student at Illinois Tech, and today I'll be talking about the IO500. Data intensive applications are bottlenecked by storage performance. For this reason, the IO500 was created. The IO500 is a community benchmark that stresses storage systems and collects details of the storage system. There are many potential applications of this data sets, including improving storage system design, influencing purchasing decisions, and identifying potential bottlenecks in storage systems. In this work, we analyze the IO500 datasets to try and gain insights into these different areas and to see where improvements can be made to the IO500 in the future. The IO500 dataset contains 57 columns and 140 rows. Relatively, it's a small dataset. Submissions range from November of 2019 to November of 2020, Various institutions such as Intel, NVIDIA, and Red Hat have made submissions. The dataset contains information about the storage systems benchmarked, including file system type, network speeds, storage type, operating system and kernel, etc. The IO500 runs eight different workloads using IOR and MDTest. IOR is used to stress IO bandwidth, whereas MDTest is used to stress metadata throughputs. Easy tests are used to show the optimal cases of performance, whereas hard cases show bottlenecks. Using this data set, we aim to identify answers to various research questions regarding the design of storage systems. We want to be able to identify the best storage system for a given workload or constraint. For example, if the workload consists of many small files, then what is the best storage system? or if the workload consists of a lot of metadata, or if it has to run under power constraints. So, in order to answer these research questions, we'll start off with the data cleaning and descriptive statistics. So, during the data cleaning phase, we found that entries in various fields were not standardized, which resulted in multiple phrasings for the same thing. For example, some people wrote InfiniBand, whereas others wrote IB. Furthermore, multiple submissions skipped information or provided less detail than expected. For example, many submissions do not report network speeds, just generic terms like InfiniBand or Ethernet. The meaning of some of the fields were interpreted differently by different users. For example, the number of storage nodes. Some people reported per node and other people reported it in total, about 50-50. In order to improve the quality of this data set, we contacted individuals to update missing or ambiguous information. Overall, this resulted in about 20 submissions being changed. Now we'll start talking about the distribution of the data sets. The vast majority of the submissions, about 80%, used either NVMe or DIMM for storage. Most submissions do not report the network interconnect speed, so this field will probably not be useful. There were 12 unique operating systems, but the major ones used were CentOS, Scientific Linux, Red Hat Enterprise, and SUS. There are 17 unique file systems and one that was not disclosed. This field had a lot of variability. Unlike the operating system field, there is no one dominating file system. The vast majority of submissions are of small scale. 75% of submissions have fewer than 45 client nodes and storage nodes, and nearly half of all submissions don't use any metadata nodes, but that's also because of the design of the storage system. Now that we've seen the distribution of the data sets, we'll look at the performance of different storage types to see if there's a trend. We do this by looking at the performance of each workload divided by the number of storage devices for each storage type. We see a common sense trend that systems with DIMMs are faster than NVMe, which are faster than SSD, which are faster than hard drives. DIMMs mainly shine in the metadata tests, which makes sense as they have faster random access. However, this metric isn't great. Uh, there are any number of reasons as to why this trend is observed. For example, 10 of the 11 submissions using DIMM also use Deus as their file system, which could also be responsible for the performance observed. Maybe if we saw more submissions using Deus over NVMe, we would have seen that NVMe's actually perform much more comparably to DIMM. 
Furthermore, the standard deviations, which are not shown, are about equal to the means, showing that there is significant variation in each of these uh, entries and that there are many other factors at play here. In summary, most of the storage systems use flash storage, specifically NVMe. The vast majority of systems are small scale, with less than 45 nodes. Most submissions do not report network speeds, so that's not a very useful field. A wide variety of file systems were benchmarked, and that field had a lot of variance. And lastly, we see a common sense trend with uh, storage device types, where DIMMs are better than NVMEs, which are faster than SSDs, which are faster than hard drives in each of the different workloads. However, this had a lot of variation as well and merits further investigation. So now we'll talk about performance modeling. The objective here is to say that uh, given the operating system, file system, number of nodes, number of processes, etc., predict the bandwidth and throughput of different workloads. Before moving on to the modeling, we'll discuss some of the limitations of this data sets. To begin with, it's difficult to describe complex heterogeneous systems with the IO500 schema. A storage node may contain more than one type of storage device, for example, but the IO500 assumes only one type of device per node. We found that there were many submissions that were not able to fully capture the design of their systems with the schema, which resulted in inconsistency and information being lost. Furthermore, the data set does not account for various important performance indicators, such as CPU, network topology, node local file systems, file system configurations, and DRAM performance. The data set also doesn't account for relevant information useful for budgeting, such as the energy cost of the storage system, the financial cost of the storage system, and the capacity of the storage system. Technically, some of this information may be non-disclosable. However, at least it would be nice to give people the option to report it. Furthermore, the data set is very small, which makes it difficult to model complex associations between features and performance. We use various approaches to model this data sets, including linear regression, lasso, ridge, and decision trees. The decision tree is bounded to contain no more than 64 leaf nodes to prevent overfitting. Due to the small size of the data set, we can only use these kind of simplistic models. We also used various transformations on the data set to try and improve performance, including logarithm and standardization. Lastly, we use common sense to reduce the dimensionality of this data set. Since there wasn't much variability in OS type, we simply removed that feature. Furthermore, we removed network information and DRAM capacity from consideration due to the significant lack of data. In total, after the feature reduction, we are left with seven features to model the data set. We tried three approaches to sampling and model fitting. The first approach was to use five-fold cross-validation on the entire data set. We used grid search to perform hyperparameter tuning of the different models. We used cross-val score and mean absolute percentage error to score the model. Next, we divided the data sets into training and testing sets using the conference dates. The training set included all data from SC19 and ISC20. The testing set included all data from SC20. We used grid search with fivefold CV on the training set to perform hyperparameter tuning, and then used the best model according to the grid search to predict the testing set. Lastly, we tried using a stratified sample from each conference date. We used 20% 20, 20 of the data for testing and 80% for training. Overall, none of these approaches worked. The R-squared score, scores were negative and the mean percentage errors were larger than three in each case, which indicated that on average, the predicted value was four times the true value, which is unacceptable. Since there isn't enough data to create a representative sample, we simply try fitting the different models to the entire data set. 
We took the log transform of the performance data to prevent the model from overfitting to outliers. We forced the decision tree to have no more than 16 leaf nodes. In this approach, we found that linear, lasso, and decision trees have an R-squared of 0 0.58, 0 0.54, and 0.88, with mean percentage errors of 1.45, 1.99, and 0.67, respectively. In each of these cases, we found that the most important feature was file system type. For linear and lasso, FS type was the only relevant feature. For the decision tree, it had an importance of 0.7, while the remainder was divided among the number of nodes and storage devices. These results show that the models are overfit to the training set. Since there aren't many submitters that use the same file system type, the file system type was deeply related to the architecture of the storage system and therefore related to its performance. One way to get around this problem is to simply remove file system type from consideration. However, in this case, the only other interesting feature is storage type. At this point, this is practically the same as looking at the per node storage type performance in slide 10. Overall, building a performance model from this data set directly is very difficult due to the lack of data and the high amount of variance in the data. Since the data collection is difficult, a potential solution to this problem would be to use the results of the IO500 to validate a simulation of a supercomputer and to use the simulator to expand the data set, which would allow us to then retrain these kinds of models. <coughs>